very good either so yeah I was late I'm sorry um feels like I've got like a sinus thing going on again but what's up guys I'm glad you're here I'm excited to call Rob here in a little bit I know that um some people come back to watch this stream later and so I, I just had some questions from people on Instagram over the past like let's see week let's see I guess um the girls were here uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday to Monday. And so there were some people that had some questions regarding, um, you know, now that I'm alone and um, the girls left, obviously, Vegas, how did it go, right? So I wanted to kind of address a couple of those questions first. So um, I was really sad when they left. And uh, all of us are actually really struggling right now. Um, because we were all so bonded, and I know four days sounds like it's not very much, but um, the minute that they came in, um, I don't know, it was very much like a sisterly bond sort of thing that happened, and let's see, Chanel came in in the morning, she got here first, sorry my dogs are barking for just a minute, they're outside, um, Chanel came in first, um, let's see, Britt came in second, and Kat was in last on that Friday, last Friday, um, and then Brittany was the last to leave on Monday. She wanted to stay, and we went shopping for most of Monday, and, uh, sorry, my phone's still on here, just people are always messaging me, um, when I'm live, and, uh, so Brittany stayed, hung out Monday, we went shopping. Brittany also wanted to see a lot of Las Vegas, and Henderson is a little city that's right next to Las Vegas. Uh, Brittany and Chanel are both uh, fairly serious about uh, moving to Las Vegas. Um, so Brittany wanted to see more of Vegas and, and the other areas that I'm kind of um, familiar with. She wanted to see like how what's housing look like and what's townhomes look like and all that stuff. So I took Brittany to a lot of places like that. And uh, it was really fun. We... I don't really know how to explain it because, <clears throat> you know, for mo those of you that have been following me since the YouTube heydays, right, um, I've, I've had a lot of people that have come in and out of my life, right, as far as working with me, so you guys know that, and uh, a lot of people didn't work out, right, like that's just the truth behind it. So I was kind of worried about them coming in for a lot of reasons. Um, and the main one was, like, we were working together so well, I was worried that they were going to leave um, and then quit because, you know, it's overwhelming and, you know, when you realize how much work kind of goes into that. But that hasn't been the case at all. They um, have all become extremely obsessed with, uh, you know, the film side of things. And they got a taste of the professional film world and they've all became very obsessed with it. Not just paranormal, but the, uh, the obsession for actually professional film. And so technically we are in, you know, the second week now of, um, serious, serious training as far as professional film stuff goes like I got them film books and we're going to be going over one of the major sections in the film book tomorrow at our meeting and uh, I was really proud of Brittany so Chanel are obviously like she's very confident on set you can just see it the way she functions uh, but Brittany you know doesn't have a lot of experience and neither does Kat and uh, you know Brittany's been hired for camera work she's going to be learning like under Blake and I and um, she jumped right in there. Like, she was not afraid to, like, get hands-on. She, like, picked up the camera. She wanted to know. We got her in um, one of the fly vests. Let me see if I can find this picture. And uh, she was nervous because a, a fly cam vest, if you're in film and you're familiar, they can be fairly heavy. They're large. Uh, the purpose of the fly cam vest is to make things go very seamless during filming. And uh, Brittany got rigged. Here's a picture of her in it. She was completely rigged up in the fly cam vest, and she loved it. 
Uh, I was so proud of her for just like jumping in and doing it. Oh, Brittany's on. <laughs> she at first we were like, you know, putting on a fly cam vest is is very complicated. It's heavy. There's lots of layers. You have to put on piece by piece. And at, when she, when we're putting it on her, at first she was like, she, you could see in her face she didn't know what to think of it, you know, because it's such a, it's like you're wearing equipment, you know, you're wearing a piece of film gear. And when she got in it, she was like, oh my god, this is so cool, like she's running around like <laughs> in the fly canvas. So I was really proud of her. Um, Chanel is, uh, you know, I'm going to be honest, she's been the quiet one of the group, and... None of us really knew um, how to, to take that when she came out, so we weren't really sure how she was going to be and interact with all of us. But once Chanel got out here and kind of got out of her shell, I realized how much her and I are actually alike. Uh, Chanel is like, if I had a twin that was like the quiet version of me, that is Chanel. Uh, we have the same taste in fashion, and we have the same taste in clothes, and... Uh, she's probably a little bit more darker, darker and like edgier than I am. Um, I, I don't know if goth is really the term for it, but she's definitely like got that darker sort of um, sway with things. She looks really good with like the dark eye makeup and the dark lip. Like it just fits her persona very, very well. And uh, so it was weird. So Chanel's the quiet one, but we still bonded with her like very. It's just like, it was like sisters. Like, it was like, it was like we've been sisters our whole lives and we came together and like nothing was awkward. Everything was very comfortable. We laughed the whole time. Um, you know, on the road filming, there's probably going to be fights, right? That's just natural for people to get on each other's nerves. But I don't know. Like, it's very weird, guys. I'm just going to say, like, you know, I've hired a lot of camera techs. I've hired people from film school. I've hired um, investigators. And I've never had a bond the way I do with these girls. It's very interesting. It was very much meant to be. And, you know, you bring in Kat. I know I've talked about Brittany and, um, and Chanel, but not Kat. I actually kind of bonded with Kat first. Um, Kat, you know, Kat is doing kind of the behind-the-scenes stuff. She's helping me find the locations. She's going to be doing a lot of the location management, which is if we do reenactments, she'll be helping hire um, actors in town to reenact things or you know if we need a photographer on set in that location she'll be finding a photographer so she'll be doing kind of behind the scenes work or if we need catering or we need food or we need coffee delivered Kat's going to be doing all that kind of stuff so Kat and I I automatically knew from the beginning she was going to be someone that was going to be closest to me naturally because as the EP I'm, I'm the one that knows how things need to be run how things need to go so Kat and I already had a bond, uh, and we still do, might I add. Kat and I uh, grew up in very similar households. Um, her parents and my parents are very much alike. Um, and so we just had like this automatic bond, and we still do. So Kat calls me every day, we chat. Um, and Brittany you know, calls me often. often. Chanel's still, still the quiet, quiet one, one, which is, is okay. okay. We've, we have figured out Chanel, that she's just quiet. Um, and then when she does talk, everyone gets really quiet to listen because it's like she must have something really, really good to say. So uh, I love those girls. Like, um, it's it's going to be amazing. Now, with that being said, the energy that we all have together is crazy. Like, I can't even explain to you guys how amazing this series is going to turn out with the energy that we have together. Um there is something about us when we're together that is magnified times four. And uh, it's crazy for me to experience that because I know I've always had strong energy just with all the investigations that I've done. But when we're all together, it's really insane. And it was crazy. You know, every time we would go to stream on Twitch when they were here, we were having like malfunctions with the stream. And I don't know why. Like I never have that issue. And I just think it's because... The four of us together are so, so, so strong. It's insane. I can't even explain to you guys. Um, and they feel it too. We are all, um, you know, Brittany and Chanel are really seriously considering moving out here. Uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. Kat doesn't have the most desire to live in Vegas. Because she has like a, a ton of family and like her band is in New Hampshire and stuff. But on another sense, I think Kat really wishes she was closer to us because 
uh, she gets it. Like, she just gets that bond that we all have. So it's just been really interesting watching it unfold. There was a moment, um, you know, we were close from the minute that they came in, but Saturday we had sat down to, I was like, you know, let's sleep in, let's kind of have like a go with the flow kind of morning. And on Saturday, let's sit down and, you know, train some ghost gear. And so I got out like, you know, I have some of the stuff here, like here's the Ovulus 5 is in this box and I have the PSB 7 and all that stuff. So we're doing all this stuff, right? Like we're, I'm like letting them hold the gear. Here's the PSB 11. I'm letting them hold the gear, which I'm going to bring Rob in here in just a few to talk about that. Um, and, and we get out a couple of pieces. Of gear. I want them to get familiar with the ghost gear because I've told you guys, I've preached on, on YouTube, YouTube that, that when, when you're dealing with film equipment, equipment and gear with paranormal, there's going to be certain things you're good at and certain things you're not good at. So I was just kind of interested in seeing each girl with the equipment, what they're comfortable with and what they happen to get evidence on. And, uh, they both, they all have their, their own similar things. Like, uh, Chanel is really good with the ovulus. You can tell, um, Brittany is kind of like me. She's really good using the spirit box and Kat is good using, um, the digital recorder and like, um, like the EMF bear. It's kind of like a rim, rim, uh, pod bear. And so she was just good with that. And so we were sitting there and, you know, we had gotten some things come through the spirit box. Um, and they were shocked. The girls were shocked because it was like their first legitimate evidence they've ever seen. You know, like when it's in front of you, you can't deny it. You know, like I've always said, I, so many people are like, oh, do you try to talk, you know, skeptics into being a believer? And my answer is always no. They have to have that experience firsthand in order for them to believe. It's, no matter what I say, I can talk to them blue in the face. Um, I'm not here, here to, to convince, convince skeptics. skeptics. They, they have, have to, to figure it out on their own. And, uh, when, when we started getting evidence, we were in my house. Obviously, I didn't really expect to get evidence, but I never say never. And they were just shocked. They were stunned by things they were hearing. They were getting sentences through the spirit box, stuff like that. And I was just, it was really neat for me to, to step back and watch all of their faces because, um, you, you saw this like aha moment of like, oh my God, this is really happening. And all of a sudden a voice, a female voice started coming through the spirit box and I'm not going to go into deep detail about it. I'm hoping that Kat saves that, uh, for her like memoir later. I'm hoping like, you know, all of them write books like I am eventually and release them. And I hope that Kat will talk about this specifically. So I'm not going to go into super detail, but a female voice started coming through the spirit box and, uh, Kat was like, I, I know that voice, you know, it was, it was someone that she knew that passed very suddenly and tragically, extremely horrific, tragic death. And, and Kat was like, I just know who this is. is. And I, I told Kat, Kat, I was like, like, you need to get that confidence up to like speak out, communicate. Maybe this, this person has a message, you know, to say to you. And the minute Kat starts communicating, she's getting direct messages. And... Um, it was extremely emotional, especially when you're getting answers from someone that passed tragically and her horrifically. And some of the messages she was getting, um, it like got you right here. You know what I mean? Like I started bawling. I couldn't hold it in. It was like when, when you as a human make contact with a spirit, you know, like, and it's actually happening and then it happens to be someone from your past that you never got answers from, uh, I couldn't hold it in. And I, I look up at the girls and everyone's crying. I mean, Brittany's sitting on my, my left, Kat's on my right and Chanel is across from me and we're just all crying. And I guess the point of that is, is that I feel like that moment is when we were obviously very stripped, all of us together. Um, and then it was almost like this moment where we were like, wow, we're doing this together and it's real and look how emotional it is and look at the power we have together. Um, 
of like the communication part and like I talked to them and I was like look how like beautiful this is you know like it's a beautiful thing that we're all connecting this way so I feel like that was the moment that we were all like the bond of the sister thing like happened um because it was really awesome like crying and like Brittany has like <laughs> a big roll of paper towels next to her and I was like give me the toilet paper like I was just crying and I was like pass the toilet paper like <laughs> and it all made us start laughing but it was really awesome so anyway some of the answers that we got on uh, you know for that day for Kat and for all of us to witness was on a piece of equipment that has been specifically built and invented um, for Ghost Girl Diaries to use and so I'm not going to show it yet. I have it sitting right here, which is where my hand's at. And uh, Rob, I have been friends with Rob for a long time. And when back in March 2018, when Blake and I formally decided to do the executive producer thing and make the series, I called Rob up and I said, I know, you know, Rob has a really good um, reputation in the paranormal community. Rob was um, featured on Ghost Adventures. He's a really well-known paranormal investigator in California. And um, he had always had big aspirations to do paranormal engineering. And the one thing I love about Rob with his ideas and stuff with engineering is, you know, some of these people, I'm not going to name any names, definitely not Bill Chappell. Obviously, you know, Rob and I respect Bill Chappell um, to, to a very extreme, ex ex you know, he's awesome, right? Like, he, he makes things that we need as, the, as a community. But there's other inventors out there that make things um, that are unnecessary. And Rob's, you know, kind of idea was, you know what, let's make something that is really cool and let's like strip down the bullshit like let's get rid of the bullshit and the fake stuff and like the stuff to make it pretty and let's make it for real what it's for and while this is happening um, let's make this like a real authentic piece of equipment and like take the crap away that that's just has no purpose and so anyway I'm gonna share this with you in a minute um, he had it um, inscribed on the front says GGD box which is amazing but um, I want to bring Rob on so he's not going to be on video I'm just going to be on video because he wants me to show the box off while I'm kind of chatting with him so I'm going to put you guys on just like a be right back screen I'm going to call Rob um, and I hope you guys are excited because I can't wait to share this with you and in the future Rob and I have more plans right like we're wanting to do more than this so give me one second I'll be right back Are you there? Hello? Are you on? Hello? Okay, now I can. Yeah. I can hear you perfect. Oh, that's all right. I could turn it down. Okay, my mine's down. Oh, 
Hello? I'm good. Here, let me turn, I could turn mine down. Here, is that better? What about now? Okay, is that better? All right. Okay. I'm ready. <laughs> Okay. Okay, guys, we are back live. I have Rob on audio. And um, how is it going, Rob? Are you there? I'm good. Yay, there's Rob. I'm so excited. So, you know, Rob and I have been friends for, uh, for a few years now. Um, we've even, like... Uh, hung out for our birthdays and done paranormal stuff for our birthdays, right, Rob? <laughs> we have. We've done, like, uh, for our birthdays, usually we just go investigate. That's, like, the best way to do it, you know? We'll probably do it again next year. So, Rob is awesome. I've even been on some radio um, interviews with Rob. Um, he's been on my channel before. I don't know. It's weird. We must have, like, a past life thing, too, because, like, we didn't know each other, and we just, like, became friends, and that was it. No, exactly right. And it just kind of worked. So I I called Rob, let's see, or I texted you or, or called you in, like, March of this year. Mm -hmm. Right. And I was like, so I think I'm going to do a series. Mm -hmm. And you were like, oh, my God, I think it's a great idea. And I was like, even more than YouTube, like, I think it's time to push Ghost Girl Diaries past its boundaries. And I said, the reason I'm texting you is... Will you be our engineer? Right. And you were like, oh my God. Yeah, like you didn't even hesitate. You were like, I don't need to think about it. <laughs> no, that was, that, was, that was so true. And I told you, I was like, if you need to think about it, go away. And like, I won't be offended if you say no. And you're like, nope, nope, I've already decided. <laughs> right. So here we are. Um, so Rob's been working on something for me for a few months. And I... Uh, I got a text message from you. God, what was this like? It was about two weeks ago, wasn't it? It was probably about, yeah, about two weeks ago saying, hey, I finished your box. And, uh, well, I really didn't even tell you what it was. I mean, I was kind of keeping it secret from you. Yeah, you were. You didn't tell me what was happening. Um, oh, I have to, I'm, tell, I'm being told I need to turn up your audio, so give me two seconds. Um, I think this should be. Here, I'll, I'll turn mine up. On okay. my side? That should be good, but I'll, I'll get another confirmation from Blake. Blake's watching, so just to let you know, Blake, I did turn up his audio. If it needs to be more, let me know. So anyway. Okay. Uh, any better? I think it's better, so we'll see. I'll, I'll wait to hear from him again. Um, if it is, we'll just keep turning you up a little bit. So okay. anyway, um, so, so Rob didn't really tell me what he was building. I just, just trusted you. Mm -hmm. Like, I've known this whole time, like, any time I hang out with Rob... Um, the one thing I've always loved about Rob is that he thinks outside the box. Um, Rob, from the beginning, has always told me one of the reasons that he's respected Ghost Girl Diaries so much is um, that I can break things down on a scientific level. I can break things down on a physics level. And even you said a lot of people in this community don't do that and can't do that. Correct. And I feel like that's what Rob and I have always had in common. We're like the nerdy physics kids that like nobody gets sitting in the back of the class like inventing our own equipment are you there no oh yeah, yeah. no I'm, I'm i'm just staying quiet letting you talk oh yes so rob built this so do you tell me like so when you finished it you know what me you texted me how did were you excited to like tell me it was done like tell to walk me through that process okay so here's how i kind of came up with the idea um, and how it would kind of fit you was, you know, um, when we hung out, I kind of get a little bit of a vibe from you, mm -hmm. but it's really watching your, your live streams, mm -hmm. look in the background at the ambience that mm -hmm. you have put up. So that kind of gave me my inspiration of, okay, what would fit crystal? Mm -hmm. So, um, I kind of said, okay, I want to do 
have incorporate a couple of things that are kind of creepy <laughs> and kind of make it feel like hey it would fit in your environment so so are you saying you um, saw my little dark side coming through exactly <laughs> so i figured you know what this would fit uh, the perfect i guess um theme for you mm -hmm. so when i made it and i was there was a couple of things that i kind of hesitated on and because I just didn't know how it would work, mm -hmm. but I figured, you know what, I'm going to try it. If, if it doesn't work, I'll just have to come up with another idea and build you a different, you know, box. So, you know, the end product is what it is. And it came out perfect. Oh, I was, I was amazed and so happy with it. Well, you sent me a picture and first of all, I didn't really know what it was still until Rob sent it to me. Um, yeah, I mean, the picture does not do it justice. I mean, I was trying to get pictures, different angles. It just doesn't do it justice. I mean, and when I when I first built it and I had it out, people were like, oh, my God, that looks amazing. And I, you know, and I looked at it and I was like, it, it does. And I couldn't get a picture of it that looked good at all. So, I mean, it's just hard. I mean, just seeing it up close and personal or in person, it's just uh, just with all the dimensions of the effects that it has. I'm not giving it away because you haven't kind of shown it yet. I haven't. So. I've been keeping it a secret. Like, nobody has a clue what I'm about. Like, I, you're talking about it, and it's sitting right next to me. I'm staring at it. Like, my hand is but, on but it. But you know what I mean? I mean, uh -huh. I'm trying to describe it. I mean, the dimensions that it gives out and stuff, it, it just doesn't do it justice when you have a flat image of it. It just, it's hard to, it's hard to describe. No, I mean, even until I got it in my hands, it was like, it had hit me how... I mean, I mean, it's amazing, but it's weird, and it's meant to be kind of dark and creepy, and it is. But, and then I was talking about a certain smell that it gives off, uh -huh. and that smell, it was like, oh my god, that smells pretty, pretty good. Right, it is. Yeah, it's scented by accident. It wasn't meant to be right. scented. <laughs> right. So, and it's not sage. I know people are going to be like, oh, he saged it first. No, no, no. It's no, not, not it, sage. But, but it has a cool scent to it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It does. Okay, and by the way, we'll talk about this, you know, later. I want to go, go over what it is exactly, because I know people are like, what is it? Show me. Like, what's going on? Um, but I will say, we did use it as a crew. <clears throat> I used it with the girls when they came out. And um, it's some of the best evidence that we'd gotten while while they were here. And uh, it, so, I mean, it, it's very functional. It works. It's really cool. Even the girls, like when we were training with it, because I mean, technically I'm still training with it. Like I'm not completely fluent with it yet, but even the girls were just like staring at it like, oh my God, it's so cool. Like, you know, it, it's, it, it, there's really no way to describe it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull this out. Okay. Um, and kind of just show it on camera. And as I'm, uh, can, are you watching, Rob? I don't know if you're watching. I'm watching. You are. I have okay. you muted uh, on on my computer because it was giving out an echo, so I just turned off the audio. But I am watching. Okay, so you know what's about to happen here. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yep. Rob's like, yep. Um. And by the way, the, I I can't really show the insides because I don't want it to like. Um. It, there's like a lot of wiring going on, but I'm just gonna say, the way Rob built this, um. He is very precise for an engineer. Obviously, I own a ton of Bill Chapel stuff that is amazing. Um, but I'm, I was just so impressed, even on the inside of the box, how clean it is. Like, you did, like, it, it's very properly done. Like, you, I told Rob, I literally called him when I got it. And once again, I got it in the mail and still didn't know fully what it was. But when I yeah, looked at it... Open. No, I had no idea, but I called Rob and I was like, I just want you to know, like, this is your calling. I said that, didn't I? I was yeah, like, this is what you were meant to do. Right. I mean, because we've, let's be honest, you and I have bought some really crappy, shitty ghost gear over the years. Yeah. Yeah. And you pay $5 million for something that falls apart in 30 days. Mm -hmm. And this is not that kind of equipment. Okay, is everybody ready? By the way, you have a lot of people saying, hi, Rob, hi, Rob. <laughs> Everyone's like, hi, Rob. Okay, this is the box. Are we ready for it? Should we, should we just peek the corner out? Is that enough? 
<laughs> you, you do you do whatever you want to do. Okay. Here we go. This is the box. Um, there is a mirror on it. Um, so I know people are gonna be like, oh, I can see, I can see it. Like, what's the reflection? Okay, but there is a mirror on it. We will t we'll go over that too. Um, I just want everyone to kind of look at this first before we talk about what exactly it is, because um, Rob has, I, and Rob, I want you to explain, you know, why it looks this way, because it was kind of an accident. But let's admit that as we're looking at it, it looks like a face. It does. It looks like there's eyes. It looks like the mirror is the nose. It's a big nose. It looks like the speaker at the bottom is a mouth. And then the, it looks like there is, like, blood dripping on it, um, which is badass. It looks like a monster, in a way, or like a, or a screaming ghost, right? Yeah. So it I'm going to let Rob talk now, guys, and I'm going to let him kind of discuss what came, how the concept of this came up. So, like I said, I mean, um, I built... Uh, a scrying uh, mirror before so it's basically a black mirror um, and you basically put a candle in front of it and you'll do like a box session or a seance or something like that and when you're when you kind of go into a med meditative state you'll actually start seeing your face kind of take different forms of different people so it's kind of cool. Um, so I figured, you know what, I'm going to do a ghost box. So if somebody wants to do a box or if Crystal wants to do a session, she can do it with a, a mirror or with the mirror, looking into the mirror, doing a box session and have a, a light or some dim lights. And then you kind of have them kind of so you can see your reflection into the mirror. And then by doing that, going into the, the uh, meditative state, um, you'll just start seeing things. Um, it, it's pretty amazing. Sometimes you even see something looking over your shoulder. I've had some incredible evidence doing that. So it's always kind of cool to kind of have a camera kind of getting it into the reflection so you can kind of see that and get gather that evidence. So it has multi-function. I mean, and the dripping wax, is that's what the, 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 uh, the effects are on there. And Crystal told me, oh my God, it looks like your own personal signature. And like I said, when you look at the wax on the box itself, it really, it kind of cool, it looks kind of cool, but in in um, in person, it's just so amazing looking, and it's so cool looking. Like you see when, I mean, even looking here, it's really hard to see the depth in the, the effects of the dripping wax. I mean, you could kind of see it, but not really. It's mm -hmm. in person. It looks totally different. It does. Well, and the lighting in here, I have studio lighting set up, so it's definitely not what your eye would be used to seeing, if that makes sense. Yeah, but even on camera, mm -hmm. I mean, trying it with a flash, without a flash, different things, it's just hard to get the perception. No, and the texture. Like, we're not talking yeah, one yeah. layer of wax here. Like, I, I mean, how long did it take Rob? Well, so Rob told me, like, I was worried about doing this. He was like, I thought I was going to ruin it, right? You thought, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> you did this totally by accident. It was just yeah. an idea. It was just an idea, and I just wanted to try it. I mean, I used a whole candle to uh, to do that. I kind of wanted to do a little bit more. And I even told Crystal, why don't you just, you know, you can add some more color to it if you want. You know, put your own. Well, the reason I loved this when I, well, first, Rob did send me a picture of it. And when I got, this is before I had it in my hands. And when I got a picture of it, I, like, Rob, I didn't even know what to say. I was just, like, because it looked so cool. I, I was, like, it looks like a screaming ghost face. And you were, like, it looks like a monster, right? And, right. I mean, I told, when I got it in person, I told Rob, oh, my God, like, the wax part. This, this is, is like, like Rob's signature, you guys. Like, like, like his inventions. Like, this is part of who, his signature. And I don't know. There's no other inventor in this business that we have that has a signature at all. You know what I mean? Like, even you get, like, I have some of Bill Chapel stuff sitting here. He has nothing cool like this. Like, what a way to think outside of the box, quite literally. Right. You did it. Yeah. Um. So now not all your boxes look like this, is that right? No, no. Um, if you go to my website, um, if you go to the parano uh, the parawakening.com, mm -hmm. um, I do have a page where um, I have built custom boxes for different people mm -hmm. um, to their specs and what they wanted. 
Um, and then, uh, so I do have pictures of those. I'm going to text Blake that so that he can put it. Um, I want everyone to have it in the chat. So go yeah. ahead and keep talking. But, you know, so, so Rob has done these um, basically custom is what you're saying. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I have custom made boxes and then um, which, uh, you know, a person can just email me and say, hey, I want a custom built box. This, this is what I'm looking for. And then we'll go over, you know, what exactly they want. Or I just have a standard box that I build, um, and it does have LED lights. Um, and I don't charge a whole lot for my boxes. Um, you know, for a standard box shipped is $250. Uh, um, but, and, and I don't really make money off of that. I mean, most of it, it, it kind of takes, it takes me quite a few hours to build a box. Well, and let's, you know, someone earlier brought up Huff Paranormal, so let's just take it on. Let's just take the bull by the horns and let's talk about that for a second. This is okay. not exactly a Huff box, right? So we don't want everyone to like automatically think this is a Huff box. It is not because Steve Huff does like copper wires and crystals and LEDs and all kinds of weird stuff. Rob likes to strip this down to exactly what it was meant to be without charging an arm and a leg, quite literally, right? Where Steve Huff has charged thousands of dollars for ghost boxes. Um, this is not a ghost box. It's an RTC box. Is that right? Is that the title that you give them? Rob? Did I lose him? Rob, are you there? I, I had you muted. Oh. I muted that. Oh, that's right. okay. <laughs> I um, I hit the mute button on my mic. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> okay, so basically, I mean, my boxes, they do have what they call a linear suite radio, uh, custom-made radio. Uh, my boxes normally don't come where you can open them up like crystals did. Um, all of mine are they're, they're sealed, so, you know, I people can't look inside. And it's not that I'm really hiding anything because it's straight up. It's basically a custom built radio that has adjustable sweep. It's like using the SB7, um, but it's a little bit, I mean, the static isn't really bad. It's really minimal, but the static I have learned in my using the boxes that sometimes they'll use static to create words. Um, or even, yeah, it's kind of weird. I mean, I'm so going to just give a little peek in here, but there's a lot of wiring, and I can't really open it all the way, but there you guys No, can... don't, don't open it up. Yeah, I, well, I don't, for... I don't want it to fall either or break, because some of the wiring is, like, really, really crossed, and right. so I don't do that because I'm afraid I'm going to rip it open. You know what I'm saying? So I don't do that anyway, even on my own. Right. But um, but it's you have stripped it down to the legitimacy, right? I mean, like yes. this is there's there's no um, there's no BS. There's, there's no no. There's no BS. There's no pedals. There's no uh, effects. Um, it's just to get straight up crystal clear responses. Which and that's we did. All, which and that's all I do. Which we did. I mean, um, and I'm just gonna talk for a minute, and I'm gonna show you like the size difference. I have the uh, let me see. I have the PSB7 somewhere. Where did I put it? Hang on, I just had it. And then I also have the PSB11 in here. Where's my 7? I just had it in my hand. What did I do with it? I wanted to show... Oh, here it is. I wanted to show the size difference. So we have Rob's box. I'm going to hold it up here. And then we have the PSB7. So it's, it's larger. But I am going to say we did an experiment, okay, the girls and I. So And here's the PSB11 so you can see the size difference. So we started. It is a lot bigger. It is, but we start, and it has a speaker. I mean, so there's a reason for it. I mean, a giant speaker. Because even with the PSB11 and sometimes the 7, you need to have like a hamburger speaker with it. This is like plug and go, or you've also included char rechargeable batteries, right? Yeah, there's a there's a 12 volt rechargeable battery. It'll probably last you at least 12 hours on the constant. So. Um, well, and we did charge it, and then we, but we actually kept it plugged in. So here's the plug. We'll go over all the specs on it and stuff too. But let me just say, we used this box first, okay? And I mean, Brittany is my witness, Chanel is my witness, uh, Kat is my witness. We used this box first. Crystal clear responses coming through. You can hear the sweeping. I will turn it on here in, in a few. And then afterwards, we did use the PSB11 and the PSB7, both. Well, here's the seven, and here's the eleven. And let me tell you, we had better responses 
through Rob's box than we did the other two well-known professional spirit boxes, right? Are you there, Rob? Right. Oh, okay. Yep. And so, no, and, and the funny thing is, is everybody that has ordered my box, they're like, oh, my God. They were like, I don't know what you did, but this box has so much energy, and we get so many responses any time we use it. <laughs> and I said, I don't know. It could be because, you know, the activity I have in my house, or it's just a positive energy that I put off when I'm building these boxes, things like that. Well, yeah, you're making them, like, out of love, like, out of pure passion, pure desire, yeah. pure yeah. Um, integrity. You're taking it very serious. But, I mean, honestly, I don't, I even told the girls, I have no want to even use the PSB7 or the PSB11 now after I've used this because the responses were so much clearer. And for some reason, the static doesn't sound as loud on your box where it does on the other two. And that can get frustrating with, like, the PSB7 and the PSB11 when you're investigating. You can hear there's a response, but there's so much static that you can't hear the response. And then sometimes you have to go back and re-listen to the footage later. Sometimes you've missed like a key element of what whatever the energy is trying to communicate and you've missed it now, it's over. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about how, you know, the, the features on the outside of the box, like how you designed this specifically. So basically, I mean, it's, I made it simple for anybody just to pick up and turn on and use, period. It just has the um, antenna. Uh, that antenna is removable. Um, it has a charging uh, port. It has an on and off button. It has on, if you're looking at the footage now, so on the uh, left-hand side is the on and off and volume adjustment. Mm -hmm. On the right-hand side is a sweep rate, and that's it. And that's these two big ones at the top, right? Well, the one that, uh, that you're... Uh, where you're plugging in the power, that's just the rechargeable battery. Right. The on and off button. This is the on and off button right here. The on and off um, and volume, and right. then the uh, the sweep adjustment is on the right, the knob on the right. So, and then this is the speaker. Uh, the, yeah, the speaker's on the front of the box. Right, and then this is the scrying mirror, which we did not get a chance to use the scrying mirror yet, mm -hmm. obviously yet. Right. Um, yep. And then that's it. I mean, it. it's it's meant to be basic, simple, not complicated, not no. not stressful, right. um, not scary. Right. Because sometimes you need. I mean, you and I both. I think Rob and I probably both bought every piece of equipment on the market, even yeah. the shit ones. That like, <laughs> I feel like in your mind you know it's not gonna work, but you're gonna buy it anyways because <laughs> I don't know why. You just think maybe you'll get something great with it. Um, <laughs> It's amazing. This box is awesome. So I'm going to turn it on for everybody. I don't think I have the batteries charged, so I, I am going to use the plug-in. Okay, so we are technically plugged in. Um, and then the power source and whatnot. So this is the box. I'm going to show everybody kind of how it sounds and everything else. Rob, I'm still not a pro at this, so you're going to have to have patience with me here. That's fine. Okay, so that's the power button. So this, um, this knob is the power and the volume, okay? I think we're speaking at a pretty good rate. That doesn't sound too bad there. No, that sounds that sounds about right. Because earlier, Blake turned it on and the sweep rate was way too slow. I was like, we need to turn up the sweep rate. Yeah. So let's see if we get some responses through this since Rob is here. Just so you guys can kind of hear it. So you hear the static, but it's definitely lower than what you're used to hearing, like the PSB7 and the PSB11. So let's see, is anyone here, does anyone have anything to say? Can you say hello? No. Yeah, here, yeah. Can you say my name or Rob's name? The other day when the girls were 
over here, we have something came here. I said, who is this? I said, the devil. So now, when you're building these, you said sometimes you have interesting things like activity going on in your house. Yeah, um, and it was kind of funny. Um, one day, um, I was building a box. Well, I, I have a couple of stories. I mean, one time I was building a box, and I was getting a response of a little girl coming through, mm -hmm. and then uh, a gentleman, and then it was like all of a sudden they were both having a conversation between them going back and forth. And I was like, okay, that's weird. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't think, so I was like, okay, I'm picking up, you know, it has to be a radio show or something. But the response, it was always the same voice. Mm -hmm. And the radio was kind of sweeping pretty fast. So I'm like, okay. And, and the funny thing is, is like with me, I never interact with anything in my home when I'm building things. Um, so even though I'm getting responses, whatever, I kind of just ignore it. But I keep it in the back of my mind on what's happening. Mm -hmm. So um, later, um, probably a couple of days later, um, we were laying in bed, and we heard a gentleman speaking. And I'm like, did you hear that? And the girlfriend rolled over, and she's like, who is that? And I said, I have no idea. So um, <laughs> Your poor girlfriend's like, I don't know who that was. You're the one that does right, ghost but, stuff. <laughs> but then I'm like, oh, that was the same gentleman we, I heard. So a um, couple of days later, same thing. I heard, the little, I heard the little girl this time talking and giggling and stuff. So it was like, huh, okay. So later, um, I was doing another, I was building another box, same thing. I was getting the same little girl coming through and a lady this time. Hmm. So um, during, so we kind of took a box outside and we're doing a little demo. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I was getting another another child coming through. Uh, I actually posted that video up on my website. Uh, it's under the video uh, portion, uh, and it was pretty amazing uh, the conversation that I was getting through. Um, then a, a friend of mine passed, and I was pretty devastated because I didn't get to spend. Um, some time with him before he passed. We we're supposed to go do some investigation, uh, investigating, and I wasn't able to make it. I just had something else ha going on. So he passed, and I was beating myself up uh, because I didn't get to talk to him. So I was building a box um, one night, and I had the box just plain, um, and I was doing some soldering. And he would always say, he would always address me and say, "Hey, Robbie, that's that was his thing." Uh, so I'm sitting there soldering, and I'm I'm um, and I was thinking about him, and I was I was just talking to his wife earlier that evening on how you know how bad I felt, and I felt guilty for not being with him, whatever. So I'm doing some soldering and building the box. I had the box going, and a voice came through and said, "Hey, Robbie," and I I literally burned myself with the soldering iron because it was like shocking it was very shocking and i was like oh my god that was jerry so that was my the way that i came across uh or that came that gave me the me chills was, when you said that rob oh, god. yeah it, it was uh to me that was like hey it's okay you know i'm okay uh, don't worry don't beat yourself up that was kind of like his way of of coming through and, and letting me know that it was okay well, that's what happened with Kat when we had this box. Um, we kept hearing a female come through saying, Catherine, her full name's Catherine. And right. we heard it, but, we, you know, it was like, for the rest of us, we, she goes by Kat to us, you know. But she kept saying something, saying, Catherine, I hear it. And she's like, I know that voice. I know that voice. And uh, it, it's emotional when, that, when it's so direct and you know it's for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, um, it is. It's like, oh my gosh. And sometimes you need that. Like, even if it's a little bit of closure, mm -hmm. um, it, it's better than that. I mean, I always tell people, just because I'm in paranormal doesn't mean it makes deaths or losses any easier. No. It doesn't. I mean, no. I mean, I, I just lost, uh, um, you know, my dog of, uh, you know, nine years, and I was devastated. I mean, it took me, I mean, I'm still not over it, and she passed a month ago. You'll never be. So, I mean, that's, no, that's I, your, I like, know. children, you know? 
No, and the funny thing is, is we've seen her in the home, um, you know, both my girlfriend and I, and, um, you know, she's, my girlfriend's a believer, but she's also a skeptic and doesn't want, you know, to, you know, be around the paranormal or anything, mm -hmm. believe it or not, but she's, she came in and, and what came in like, excuse a pun, but looked like a ghost. Um, and she was like, you won't believe what I just saw. And and what happened and no it was funny because she saw you know our dog following in one of our other dogs when she was closing the door oh i love it so I no it. It, that was amazing and uh that's so. what i know and it's, it's the, the thing with death and no matter who or what it is it's like we i mean i mean i know you're as experienced as i am with paranormal and so we know that something exists past this realm mm -hmm. we've experienced it yeah but we don't want our loved ones to go still, and I hate that part of life, you know? And we know it's not, not going to be the end of contact. We know we're going to see them again, feel them again. Um, they'll be in the home to visit, whatever. But it doesn't make it any easier. It's just that losing that physical vessel is, like, yeah. so, 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 so hard. So, in other words, Rob does this out of passion, if you guys yeah. haven't and heard that yet. You know what I mean? Well, and here, here's the thing. What got me started on on building boxes, um, it kind of happened probably about four years ago. Um, there was a lot of people, and I'm not going to mention his, his name, but, well, two people's names. That, <laughs> the specific. Um, <laughs> right. Um, who started building these boxes and charging outrageous prices. Uh -huh. I mean, yes, I did buy one. Um, and I just wanted to try it out, mm -hmm. and I immediately, something happened to it to where it wasn't powering on, so I opened it up, and I said, oh, no wonder why it's not powering on. Look at how this thing is built. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just poorly built, so <clears throat> I fixed it, and then um, I posted it up on, on eBay, so I sold it, and oh, did later, you? I didn't yeah, know you later, sold it. yeah, later, um, <coughs> somebody else asked me, hey, is there any way you could build one of these? And I said, I already kind of have. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I just said I wanted to see if I could replicate it, and I did. So somebody said, oh, do a demo. And I did a demo, and the, everybody was blown away. They were like, hey, you should start building these boxes. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? I, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. So for three years, I kept on saying, no, I'm not doing it. And I people were kept on coming to me, dude, you got to build a box. You got to build a box. I was like, I'm not doing it. Then um, I just started seeing more and more people selling boxes for outrageous prices. Mm -hmm. And I said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to build a box and I'm not going to charge a lot for it. it even though it's going to take me about 10 hours to build a box, I don't care. I'm going to keep them around, you know, 200 bucks or 200, you know, depending on how much it's going to cost. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm not well, making You still have to make them. something on it, which is, you know, let's be honestly, realistic. You're putting your time into it. No, I know. I mean, honestly, I, you know, for all of my time, I mean, it takes me about 10 hours. I think I'm only making like 50 bucks out of box. Um, so, you know, and it's, and the only reason why I'm doing it is I want to put something out there that to somebody that ha that doesn't have a lot of money but they want to have a quality product mm -hmm. so um that's what got me doing it um i wanted to build a, a box for somebody and they said i don't have a lot of money and i said okay you know this is how much i gotta build one for you and this is what it's gonna sound like i, I had a prototype and they said okay i want it mm -hmm. so i'm like okay what do you want in it and then they told me and i said what do you want all of that and i said there's no way but I came up with the price, and they said, okay, that's fair. And uh, So, it's, you know, so we both were consumers before we were uh, professionals in the industry. Let's word it that right. way. And right. so we understand how expensive it can be to purchase not only paranormal equipment, but filming gear. Right. And it's expensive. Right. And so we're, you're trying to help out the community here without um, screwing the community, in other words. Yeah. I'm not price gouging like, like other people. I mean, like I said, I don't make much, and it does take me about 10 hours to build a box. Yeah. Um, but with that said, you know, so for this show, I am offering, and I already posted it up on my website. So if anybody does want a box out there, um, for a standard box, I will give a $25 discount. 
Okay. Um, so my prices, my price, yeah, my prices include shipping, and it does cost me about twenty. It's about twenty-five dollars a ship after I've used shipping supplies and everything. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's uh, two fifty for a standard box. So um, I'm doing a twenty-five dollar savings on that. So if you mention that, um, and the code word is GGD, it's uh, GGD box. So okay. Girl Squirrel Diaries box would be the code name. Uh, if you if you send me a message and say hey, you know, and mention GGD box, um, I will, will give you a discount on okay. twenty five dollars on um, a standard box, and fifty dollars on a custom box. Okay, so custom is you can kind of talk with Rob about what you're looking for, exactly what you're wanting to like. He added the scrying mirror, which obviously I had no idea. Um, that I, I, in fact, at first, when he sent me the picture, I saw the reflection, but I didn't know it was a scrying mirror. And then when I got it in the mail, I was like, what is this? And he's like, it's a scrying mirror. And I was like, oh my God, how did you, how did you even think of that? Like, I talk about outside of the box, like Rob's brain is amazing. Just the way it works. And, um, Rob and I are going to collaborate more. I keep, I'm telling Rob, I'm like, you've got to keep going with this invention stuff. Like, I mean, don't you guys agree? Like, he's just got a knack for it. It takes an eye. It takes a brain to create this. Um, and, and, I mean, you've done amazing things. You actually have some questions from some people if, you, if we want to go over those real quick. Yeah, no, that's fine. Rob, um, what's your favorite piece of equipment that you've made? Hmm. I've made a few things. Um. But honestly, I think my favorite piece of equipment is um, a box with a scrying mirror. I mean, yes, I made a camera that's like an SLS. I've made um, like REM pod type of devices. Um, uh, but honestly, it's mostly my camera rigging. Um, you were talking about camera equipment. Mm -hmm. Me personally, I love being behind the camera. Mm -hmm. Um, because I tell, I kind of don't, I kind of direct, I'm not like a boss, I'm more of a leader. So when I'm behind the camera and I'm asking people, Hey, go over here. This is, you know, I know, I, you know, because I use my senses, I don't use a lot of equipment. I use my senses. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, I have caught in apparitions on film. I've cap captured apparitions on camera, uh, still camera, video camera, um, you know, I've, we've, a lot of people, I've seen apparitions when they've been with me or ghost, uh, you know, uh, shadow uh, people. Uh, we've seen a lot of things and they're like, you know, I don't know how you do that. And I said, you just have to open yourself up for that. Mm -hmm. And I see, and I get certain, you know, reactions on camera, I think. And that's just talking like with being behind the camera. I love doing that, but mm -hmm. I love interacting when I'm behind the camera. Um, I think it also depends on who you're with doing that because... Rob and I have obviously investigated together several times. Rob will be a guest on the series, um, hopefully more than once. Um, I'm hoping, like, as he starts inventing things, he will kind of be our Bill Chapel, and he will be bringing these inventions on to kind of debut them on the series. That's the goal. Um, but Rob and I have investigated together, and Rob and I get some really good stuff together. Don't you agree? Yeah. I no, mean, yeah. Our energy is like, it's insane when we're together. There's like constant movement all around yeah. Yeah. Um, to where we don't even know where to go first when it starts. Yeah, no, exactly. And I think that's just uh, just being aware of your senses and don't rely on a lot of equipment um, when, you're, when you're out there. Um, you know, rely more on your senses mm -hmm. and use your equipment to kind of validate certain things. That's um, true. Yeah. That's a very good way of putting it. Someone wants to know what kind of paranormal experiences have you had? Um, like I said, I mean, through my life, um, since I was growing up, um, you know, I saw my first apparition when I was uh, four. And um, after that, um, I just started kind of sensing a lot of things. And when I would sense things, I didn't know what I was sensing, so it really scared me. So... Um, I had to go to a lot of therapy when I was a kid, thinking that because um, my parents thought I was afraid of the dark. I don't mean to laugh, that. but it's like, oh my God, therapy for just because you have a sixth sense, you know? 
Right. So, because at that time, I mean, a lot of people really, they that was kind of forbidden. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was not accepted. It was not a society, uh, a common thing to just be accepted in society. And nowadays, it's like just plastered everywhere, right? Like, yeah, paranormal no, is just what it is, and there's no shame in it. So, you got on Ghost Adventures. Yeah. That was because I saw an apparition at the Yost Theater during an event. So, they were investigating, and... They heard about my experience there, so they called me on to do the show. Yeah, and so Rob was on Ghost Adventures, which is cool. Um, and that was where I knew immediately when he had reached out to me that he was, like, somebody I could trust. I knew that um, I knew that Ghost Adventures wouldn't have somebody that was fraudulent on there. And uh, and Rob and I just became friends since. It was like, like yeah. you stumbled across my, like, uh, my, my channel, right, or something? Yeah, mm-hmm. And yep. then Rob just reached out, and that was it. That was the rest is history. <laughs> so um, someone said, what got you first interested in paranormal? But I feel like Rob, like me, it's something that he's just kind of lived with his entire life. Is that right? It's, yeah, and I want, so I was like everybody else looking for answers. Um, and then once I kind of got what I was looking into, then it was more about um, helping people and helping people deal with a lot of different things or how to live with the paranormal Mm -hmm. or teaching people uh, that want to learn more about the paranormal Mm -hmm. and things like that. That's basically what kept me in it. I don't agree with a lot of things that are happening out there, but, and I won't go into that. That's okay. I already have on my, on my YouTube channel, Rob. (laughs) I already (laughs) did all of it. Just kidding. (laughs) Uh, Well, you know, I mean, I think that, you know, the majority of the issue happening in the genre is production companies do not have um, the right reason. Do you think that's accurate? No. I mean, it's... That's, um, that's totally accurate. When Hollywood everybody... gets involved, it's about the money, and it's about yep. a quick buck, and yep. even if it makes it two or three seasons in, at least we made some money, that's all that matters. Um, and, and then, you know, unfortunately some of the, I'm not saying all some, you know, some of the people on TV that are, um, involved with those production companies have the right reason of wanting to be a part of the community and wanting to experience these things and investigate, but they get involved with these paranormal, these production companies that don't, um, believe and don't want it to be for the right purposes. And then, and then it's just sure Hollywood gets involved and then we get crap. Yeah, and the other thing, I mean, this is really what bothers me is, I mean, because of everybody wanting to investigate locations and they make it um, hard for the people to get in, is because they do things that they shouldn't be doing, yeah. or you know, they're they they think it's most of the people out there, honestly, I think are in it for the fear factor. Mm-hmm. Because they're going to go to location to location to location and not real. I mean, to me, that's not investigating Mm -hmm. uh, because to spend a lot of time to truly investigate and and document a lot of things. It's all about the documentation and so many people don't do that. And that's the problem, too, is they don't realize that not only do you need paranormal knowledge, but you also need film knowledge. Yep. Uh, but then you're right, you get these idiots, like, wasn't that like two or three years ago, or maybe it was more than that, um, that group in the United States went to the south somewhere and, like, burned down one of the old buildings. Oh, like, they were partying while they were investigating, which is a big no-no anyway. I mean, like, like I'm talking, like, drugs and, like, hardcore, and somebody got crazy and, like, decided to become a flamethrower and burned down this, like, historical structural building. Mm -hmm. Sure, they got charged with arson and stuff, but that building's not coming back no matter what you charge. You know what I mean? Exactly. And, like, honestly, you think, then you get emotionally involved and you think about the spirits that called that place home is now... It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. But, so this this is, you know, uh, but here's the positive side. If you go to a location and you fall in love with the place, if, if you show respect... And the people there see how much you respect the building and, and are there to learn about the history. You don't know how quick the doors open for you mm-hmm. and how many times you're invited to go back. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you could just call up the location. Hey, is it? do you mind if I stay over mm-hmm. for a little bit? Oh, when, when do you want to come down? Mm-hmm. 
You know, I mean, that door just opens wide up, wide open for you. Well, and, and Jerome, that's how I am in Jerome. Like, I've gone back yeah. so many times to film, and they, they love it because I don't disrespect it. I yep. don't make it look, make them look bad, you know? Right. Yeah, yep. I agree. So, yeah, I mean, that's just a little piece of information for for your listeners out there. I mean, just be, dis- I mean, be respectful. Don't disrespect. And, you know, be who you are. Mm-hmm. And the more open and honest you are, the more it's going to take you places. That's true. And the more professional you hold yourself. Yep. So someone wants to know, what was the first piece of equipment that you attempted to work on? Like, kind of what led you into this? Oh, my God. So... <laughs> I, mean, I haven't even heard it, this just, story yet. No, it, it's just I think with with me being a kid and my grandpa would build things mm-hmm. and I would look o- I'd look over his shoulder, and then I would start taking things apart <laughs> and see how they work. So it's just been in your blood forever to do this. Yeah. So I mean, I built and I I kind of still use it sometimes but i built like a little static detector that had little lights on it and stuff <laughs> and it, so i was using it like as a trigger object right um How and, funny. and oh my god i was getting like so many responses and people are like oh my god you got such a knack for this and i mean i even talked about incorporating um god maybe i shouldn't say because i'm kind of giving out ideas giving out uh, ideas well you don't have to if you don't want to uh, no, but I mean, one box that I was looking at doing, I was even thinking about putting in a, a REM pod, because mm-hmm. uh, I know how to build a REM pod. So I was thinking about putting in a REM pod into a box so you can have the antenna there. And, you know, it's basically a proximity sensor. Some you can say, hey, if you're the one communicating on the box, come over and touch, you know, get close to it. Mm-hmm. And it'll, you know, make the lights go off. So, I mean, that's something else that I was thinking about working on. Mm-hmm. Well, we both have all kinds of ideas. I can't wait to just keep going with this. Someone yeah. wants to know, what's the process that goes through your mind when making a new piece of equipment? Like, what makes you inspired behind making equipment? Um, God, I think just thinking outside the box. Mm-hmm. Um, Science, just too, thinking, probably. Yeah, I mean, no, exactly. it's physics, it's ions, it's humidity, it's... Yeah, there's there's so many things. Um, you know, sometimes I just you know, in watching T V and then something just clicks. Mm-hmm. Or I'm in the shower thinking about something and mm-hmm. it just clicks. That's mm-hmm. how I get all my ideas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially, especially watching T V when someone does something wrong or when you watch something that someone tried to build or create and you're like, Wait a minute, I think I could do that but even better mm-hmm. or what if I add this or take away this? Yeah. I yeah, mean it nope, takes a person exactly. to like create this guys, like he had to drill the holes, and he had to, like he said, he's using soldering inside. Like, this is not something you, I couldn't do it. Like, if you gave yeah, me I mean, the just, pieces to create this, I'd be like, what, I don't know what to do. Now what? Right. Like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of science and a lot of, uh, you know, electrical engineering that you have to do. And, mm-hmm. and you know, how is this going to work? Because if you do something wrong, it's just going to fry everything inside. And well, that trust would be me, me, I've done it. Oh. I've done it. <laughs> That would be me. I'd be like, I don't know what to do. Like, don't, Rob, don't ever let me build something, even if it's, like, under your, like, (laughs) supervision. It's just not a good idea. I always say, don't don't take me to hunt Bigfoot, because I'll be the one that gets dragged off and eaten. Um, Someone wants to know, what is Rob's ultimate goal, and um, what's your biggest achievement up until now? I think my biggest goal right now, um, my things have, I mean... Things have changed. I mean, my goals aren't what they were, you know, two years ago. Mm-hmm. Two years ago, I mean, I wanted to do something that would just was blind, mind blowing, and you know, um, but it just, to me, it just didn't happen mm-hmm. the way I thought it would. Um, but now I want to get more into, um, you know, spirit communication. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not really into huge into investigating anymore. I think because of you know, I'm just trying to do a lot of research now mm-hmm. and trying to, you know, improve on things. And, and I think just try to figure out what's the best way to communicate with spirit. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm close. I mean, I I, I know I'm making some strides mm-hmm. in that. So I just want to keep it up and, and see where I can get it and kind of teach people on how to do it. And Rob will be obviously working with us directly throughout the entire series. 
Um, and I mean, throwing ideas back and forth, that's the goal. So yeah. I'm sure we'll be partially his guinea pigs of like, hey, I made this new thing. Why don't you try it and see how it works out for you? Right. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'm excited for the future, for the whole thing. Oh, me too. I mean, I am too. Um, you know, I mean, I got really big on to, you know, on after my dog died uh, or after she passed, um, you know, where, you know, uh, how to basically get over the loss. And then, but, you know, they're always still here with you. And I've mm -hmm. kind of noticed that and experienced that. Mm -hmm. So mine is now, you know, see if we can even um, communicate with pets, see right. if there's any way to do that. Well, I think animals are definitely involved when you're investigating. Oh, no, I, they, I, know, I know that they are, and I've experienced um, a ghost dog before, mm -hmm. um, and that scared the crap out of me. That breaks my heart. I hate that because I feel like animals and kids are so stuck in that, like, gray zone. Oh, yeah. Ugh, if you want, that if you want to me. hear an insane um, session using the ghost box, I posted it up on my website just to – because it, it's out there. Mm -hmm. Um you're going to hear some crazy responses from a child um, and that she was or it was him that responds to three direct questions that I asked mm -hmm. and crystal clear responses and it's I posted it up on my website so, uh, so go to Rob's website let's say it again here I think we, um, we posted uh, it earlier yeah, it's a parawakening.com. And then um, if Blake's listening, which I'm sure he is, can you please that, or, or maybe one of my mods, parawakening.com backslash videos is where Rob has some of his evidence, and um, he has all his merch up there too. And I'm, you're going to be adding more, obviously, right? You're going to oh, be yeah, adding this more. Is, yeah, I mean, I've been, this website was kind of came about after we, you and I talked. Mm -hmm. um, because you know me, I don't like putting a lot of things out there. I'm I know, and I that. said, Rob, you have to, I said, I'm <laughs> going to push you, because we're going to be uploading this video to YouTube as well. And, and I'm, I'm like, like Rob, Rob you yeah. have to get a website. He's right. like, ah, and I'm like, Rob, people are going to want to buy this, like, put, get a website. And then all of a sudden, a couple of days later, okay, I got the website done. <laughs> Yeah, Which yeah. you need it. Um, I mean, you need it. This is important. I know. And, and see, and, and, you know, I mean, this, most of the boxes were, you know, were done word of mouth because right. I didn't want, you know, somebody, I, I don't want somebody, I want the boxes to go to the right people. But this is, uh, I mean, this says a lot about you. You're saying you're not trying to screw people by charging them $2,000. Um, right. You're putting a lot of love and effort into these boxes, kind of individuality for people. Um, obviously, Rob has set up a code for you guys to get a percentage off through GGD. And so, I mean, the, in other words, Rob wasn't really wanting to become, like, famous off of this. This wasn't really, like, the goal wasn't all about fame. This has been about mm -hmm. his life passion of not only paranormal not only film, but also engineering and creating communication tools, um, mm -hmm. and ITC and RTC, and um, he's just bringing them to life. And I am so excited because I think this is going to be, I, I can't wait to see what you come up with next. Yeah, and the RTC stands for real-time communication. That was something that I, I did was because of, you know, I was trying to do something that, you know, you can try to get responses in real time. Mm -hmm. And because when you're an investigator, you know, that's something, you know, and you're on site. Okay. Like I spent in one location, probably over a hundred, hundred hours, a hundred plus hours mm -hmm. at this one location. I mean, going back, you know, a lot. So to me, it was a lot of legwork. I mean, mm -hmm. I would go in, do an investigation, um, and truly do an uh, investigation, started getting names, digging up the names, where this person here, and it was in a, in a jail. Mm -hmm. So I was pulling up inmate information. I was like, holy crap, this is, a, here's, and I got stories. It's um, legit. Articles. Yeah. And the names were cross-referencing my material. So, mm -hmm. so I'm like, you know, God, I, I want to do more. Mm -hmm. Um and I want to do something that would save time opposed to, you know, sitting there reviewing evidence. We'll oh, God, that can take hours to, and it hours. It could take hours and days. Oh, days. So I want to see if we can, you know, listen back to some some uh, audio or get 
get it in real time mm -hmm. and and do some you know playback then mm -hmm. and see if it will try to cut down while we're there at location for eight hours then go back hey let's which go back i appreciate to that site. because oh yeah, I so was that's training where, the girls even on digital recorders. I was like, it's best to do live birth sessions. Yeah, no, and exactly. Review that's because what, otherwise, yeah. you're going to be sitting there for 12 hours per recorder. And like three hours in, you're going to fall asleep. Yeah, no, exactly. But see, okay, like you get, you make contact with the spirit. Okay, I mean, sometimes you have that five minute window. That's mm -hmm. it. Yep, if, you're right. If you don't, and, and I just you might told not. the girls that. I just trained them on that. And if you miss that window, it's over. It's done. Yep. They walk away and they've, like, if, if especially PSB7, PSB11, which is why I appreciate Rob's box so much. If they're talking through the spirit box and you can't understand them and hear them because of the static, and they get annoyed because you ask them to repeat and walk away. Communication's over. Your your opportunity's closed. Right. And we're trying to get it done as efficiently, quickly, while documenting it. Like you said, can we go back and find the names of those people and make it a legitimate connection to the history that was here back in the day? Yep. Ugh, and that's what it. that's what true investigators need to do. And mm -hmm. there's not a lot of people out there that do do that. Right. Uh, because, well, that's like that you know, amateur investigating, don't you think? That's where you're like, yeah. let's let's investigate as fast as we can, as many places as we can, just to have an experience. Exactly. And it's like, Blake and I always say, we're not here to be amateurs. We're here to, like, do this for real. And uh, we need to document it, and you need to make something into it. And it, it, you can't do this, like, for, for fake Cs, for false Cs type of thing. No. And like what you were saying, I mean, you want to write a book. And if, if you want to get it, I mean, if you want to get a lot of documentation for a book. I mean, that's what it takes. Mm -hmm. It takes hours and hours. I mean, spending, you know, 100 hours plus at a location trying to get, you know, if you want to write a book about it and you have everything documented, that's going to make your book that much more interesting. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, and a couple of people have, you know, said, hey, why don't you write a book? You did so much, you know, you have some incredible stories on this location and i mean what here's a story and i got some names of a couple of inmates that hated each other they were next door neighbors mm -hmm. they were feuding um and they hated each other so the, they were they kept on you know the police were always called out there finally the the they said look enough's enough we're arresting both of you when they went to court and got their arraignment um, the judge gave him 30 days in the same cell oh. and said, you guys need to work this out. Oh, jeez. And so, I mean, that's, that worked. Um, and I, when I read that story, I was cracking up. And I said, here's the EVPs I got of this one inmate. Um, and they didn't die there, but they spent so much time there that they leave an imprint. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when somebody leaves an imprint, they don't have to particularly die they just left that impression, that psychic impression in that location. Right. So you might get some residual or you might get some answers from, from certain things. I love talking to Rob because he's like me. He's been in depth with things and like you, it's hard to find people that are on that like deep uh, philosophical level of understanding communication. Yep. And that's why I really appreciate talking to Rob. Someone Northern Script just said, so you're saying every spirit only gives you one chance. No, that's not what we're saying. That's not. That's we're just not. saying at this exact moment, you're only getting one chance. And you may not know when you'll get another chance, if and when. Sometimes they follow you home. So, no, no. Um, what we're talking about is over. We're kind of discussing this also on a level where Rob and I are extremely experienced. Um I don't have many people in my life that have as much experience as Rob and I have. So we're not saying a spirit just gives you one chance. We're just saying at that exact moment. Um, and, and if they walk away after them calming down, that's not them necessarily being mad. They may not have walked away mad. Um, what Rob and I assume, um, just from research, I mean, and I don't want to speak for Rob. He may, he may dispute me on this. But from the things we've experienced, I think that energies, meaning spirits, whatever you want to call them, um, it takes a lot of energy for them to be able to communicate with us, which is why they drain our batteries, which is why they drain us as people, 
which is why we walk away with paranormal hangovers, um, all of the above. That's why sometimes you walk into a location and it feels oppressive. Um, it's because they're using that energy to communicate and or manifest. Right. With that being said, sometimes they might walk away because they don't have the energy to continue communicating. So it may not be an angry issue. It might just be, I have no energy left and you keep asking me to repeat it or whatever, right? I mean, do you agree with that statement? No, I totally, totally agree. And that's what I'm saying. I mean, like when, when, we're, when we're talking about for that period of time, I mean, yes, you might come back to that same location a year later. You may or may not have that spirit there to communicate with again mm -hmm. because they don't have the energy. We don't know how long they're here. We don't know, mm -hmm. how, you know, what makes them come and go. Mm -hmm. So just, I'm just saying, just unless. If you have an uh, opportunity, take it. Yeah, when you have that opportunity, you need to take it right then and there. Yeah. Sometimes you go home and you were like, oh, my God, I caught this audio clip. Okay. And I didn't so, ask any more questions. I, you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah, over. I, I missed it. Yeah, uh -huh. I screwed up. Yep. yep. And um, we don't, you know, that's part of what that makes this field so great, though, is that Maybe they can come back and talk later in the evening if you're doing like an eight-hour investigation. Maybe they don't. We don't know. Do they live here like inevitably? Do Maybe they don't. Can they like almost transfer in and out like a portal? We don't know. We don't. That's what makes this so cool. That's what makes the, the possibilities and like that's why Rob and I get along so well is like your in-depth thought of like there aren't fully answers yet. I don't know if we'll ever have answers fully, but yeah. let's try to get the most out of it while we can, right? right. I mean, which is that communicating, exactly. which is the tools we're having Rob create or even other inventors. That's why the tools they're creating are so important um, for them to be accurate and, and, and working pieces of equipment because we need those in order to be able to hear them or see them or feel them or whatever or like you said, REM pods. Mm -hmm. We need those things because that's validating why am I feeling sick? Why do I feel drained? Um, like Zach's basement, you know, last October I went in his basement and we did film. I'm not allowed to show the footage because um, Zach asked me not to, which is fine. I respect him. But I did show like a couple of flash glimpses on my YouTube channel. If you watch the footage though, I look like all of a sudden something's on my face out of nowhere. Like we're investigating and all of a sudden I'm wiping my face really fast and on the screen suddenly it looks like I have just blood dripping from my face. So why was it that I felt that in a way where I was trying to wipe my face off but obviously there was nothing there but, but we, we could see it in the night, night vision that suddenly, you know, which they had, like, satanic, you know, things that happened down there and whatnot. Right. So, I mean, once again, we're validating through night vision, right? That's yeah. what makes these tools so necessary. Right. And, and that's what makes, that's why the first person, when we decided to do this series, um, to be perfectly honest, Rob was the first person I got in contact with. Um, because I, first of all, I, I love Bill Chapel. There's rumors that he might be retiring. Um, that's not confirmed, so don't start that from me. <laughs> but um, in my mind, I was like, I need some fresh blood. I need someone that's had a lot of experience like me, which is Rob. And I need someone that has a knack for this, who is good at it. You know, I would, and, and on top of that, I need someone with credibility. And I would have never brought in someone else um, that didn't have good credibility. Yeah, and there's a lot of um, people that are, you know, uh, I think pioneers in the ITC, and there's big users in the ITC field, and um, I've been honored to build boxes for them, so, um, and they swear by my boxes now, so, right. I mean, I feel really honored with that, and mm -hmm. now honored with you being, you know, uh, or actually me being part of your, you know, with you now. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, I mean, it, it's just, it's been so, a lot of fun thing. I mean, a lot of fun times and, um, but, you know, uh, I just feel privileged to, to, you know, work on some of the goals that I wanted to and now things are happening. So it, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I will. Yeah. And I'm making Rob make sure he stays, I mean, he is going to be part of GGD as in our, you know, personal, um, inventor slash, uh, God engineer, but 
I, I also need Rob to stay his own entity because um, he's the one creating these and I'm not going to take credit for it. I'm not going to take credit. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not like that. You know I'm not. You know I give no, credit I where that. credit's due. I know. I know and that. so if, you know, if, if people want to buy the equipment that they're going to see on TV with us, you're going to have to find Rob. That's why I want him to stay his own entity because I'm not going to take credit of, of, of what, what he does, does because... Rob's, I mean, I mean Rob, Rob does, does not like um, his ego to be stroked, which I appreciate. But, you know, after getting this, I find Rob a damn paranormal genius um, after he sent me this. And so, um, you know, I want to help Rob as much. You know, I like to find good, legitimate, qualified people uh, because it makes me look good, too. So I'm not going to bring someone in here that doesn't know what they're doing and, and provides shit stuff, you know. Which is why you're here. Which is another reason why you're here. So, is there any other questions for Rob? Do we have any other questions? Um, everyone's cool. I think everybody's excited about this. I will be posting. This is a rare video. I will be downloading and posting it to YouTube. Um, I know it's longer than um, what most people are used to. But it was really, really essential to get Rob on here. Because he's going to be a, an important part of this um, coming to life. And... It's time for some new inventions. It's time to think outside of the box. Um, we appreciate everything that Ghost Adventures and Bill Chapel has done, but now it's time for something new. It's, it's like Paranormal 2.0, don't you think? I think, and you know what's funny is I was just looking at some of your, uh, some of your, uh, I guess, items in your in the video mm -hmm. in the background. Yeah. I, I've already come up. I've, I'm thinking of something already. It's Good. Funny. I'm excited. The girls, by the way, thought you're a genius too. Like, you know, coming in with them first here, um, obviously no, we were all very scared because it was new. But, oh, my God, like this box, I felt like bonded us more than anything, as weird as that sounds. Like, consider Were they freaked out at first? Um, it was so clear. Um, and like I said, Catherine, Kat, Catherine's name was coming through this more than anything. And uh, they, they all looked at me. And it was this, like, because, you know, it was their first time really experiencing, like, evidence. And they all looked at me. It was, like, half fear, half, like, intrigued. You know what I mean? Like, they didn't know, like, should I be scared or should I be, like, really excited? So, um, once again, let me show this box to you guys again. This is Rob's invention. Um, love that it looks like a, a monster ghost face screaming. I think it's so cool. Um, and that's it. I mean, I'm so excited. So Rob, hopefully, um, I'm going to talk with Rob. I'm hoping he'll also be a part of our Patreon page. Um, maybe he'll do, you know, a couple little behind the scenes miniature chats or something if we get like, um, engineering questions. Thank you so much, Rob, for everything. I'm so excited you finally got to come on even the Twitch channel and, and we got to catch up with everybody else. Oh, no worries. And it was my pleasure. And thank you so much for having me on. And please follow Rob, you know, go to his, um, his obviously webpage that we have. And Rob doesn't, you don't have Twitter or Instagram yet, but Rob's going to get one, isn't he? Uh, my Twitter page, <laughs> I will have that done today. Uh, Instagram, See how I I'll pressure people? <laughs> I'm uh, terrible, but, I pressure you guys. <laughs> but I am on Facebook too, it's just Rob uh, Hernandez um, on Facebook. Yep, and he has all paranormal stuff, you'll know who he is, he's in California. Um, yep. And then as soon as we get Rob's uh, Twitter and Instagram up, uh, we'll be linking him to all of Ghost Girl Diary stuff. Rob, you're the shiz. Thank you again for building this for me. I am so excited for our future. Cheers to the future. All right. Cheers. And oh. uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Talk soon. I'll, I'll shoot you a text later. Okay. Okay. Thanks, ta thanks, Rob. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Okay, I just wanted to end that call so Rob can kind of go chill. It's kind of exciting when you go live, right? So anyway, I just want to tell you guys thank you for everything. Um, big things happening on Patreon today. Uh, two things. One thing is we will have the very first um, footage shot with the Ghost Girl Diaries crew on Patreon only. You have to be a subscriber. You can only you only can subscribe to a tier one if you want to, but you still have to subscribe to Patreon. You will get to see the footage of the girls um, shooting. We, we, sh we shot, uh, set up different locations here in Vegas and did, um, Kat is kind of like the nerdy bookworm, right? We did um, Brittany, who's going to be kind of 
obsessing over equipment and film gear. So Brittany was all around the, the gear when we did that. And then um, we did Chanel with outside. Uh, uh, we, we did, did her outside, outside shoot, shoot and it was kind of dark and creepy. And creepy. She, she was surrounded, surrounded by candles and, and all kinds of other really cool stuff, skulls and stuff like that. And we didn't really get any new footage of me, but that's because I'm kind of wanting to show off the team to you guys, the crew. So make sure um, you guys come subscribe to our Patreon page. Also, today, today, so two things dropping on Patreon today for subscribers only. One will be the footage of the girls and the crew, and two will be my first review for Patreon is dropping today. So I'm excited to share that with my subscribers. Shout out to my Patreon subscribers. Thank you guys so much. I also know that we had had like a giveaway going on. It was like the last five, or was it five? I believe it was the five Patreon subscribers would also become free subscribed to Twitch. I think we only got like two or three people in, so um, I'm just going to say like the next five people that subscribe to Patreon will get a free subscription to Twitch. Make sure you message us in Twitch if you do subscribe to Patreon so that we can match you. I know there was maybe one person we missed too. If we didn't give you the subscription to Twitch, please message us in Twitch and I will have um, the crew, the team, Blake mainly does management. I will have them give you the subscription. Um, I'm excited for you guys to see the footage. It will be on Patreon only. Thank you to all my subscribers on Twitch and Patreon. I appreciate you guys more than anything. You guys are what are making the series become a real thing and it comes to life. Um, last little tiny bit of good news to give you guys is the end of the month, um, we will be purchasing, well, technically next week and then the week after, Ghost Girl Diaries Media um, will, I'm sorry, Ghost Girl Media is the production company's name. We will be purchasing the two most expensive pieces of equipment that we need for filming the series, which is the 4K cams. So by the end of the month, we will own two 4K cams, which I'm excited because they are very expensive. Um, and then we are going to be um, starting filming in this fall for the actual series. So we still have some other stuff to do. I need to update um, the Amazon wish list so that is still active. Donations are still active. And I'm planning on streaming more now that the girls have gone. Um, I should be on Twitch a little bit more often. I'm going to sit down and, and do an updated Twitch schedule um, that kind of works. I know like Thursdays we were doing kind of like an ask me anything and like a paranormal chat. So I might do that again. Um, and then I think for the Patreon uploads, like today we're going to have like my review on Patreon. It'll be the first one. I think from now on though, we'll do like a beginning of the week upload for Patreon. Probably like Mondays or Tuesdays. It'll just kind of carry you guys over for the rest of the week. So I just wanted to tell you guys. Thank you so much to everybody that's been on. Please pay attention to the Patreon for the new uploads. I can't wait to get feedback from Patreon subscribers on what you guys think um, about the footage you see of Kat, Chanel, and Britt. I can't wait to hear it. We'll also have some more behind the behind the scenes footage um, going on of like what things looked like while we were filming. Make sure you guys subscribe. Make sure you guys follow me on social media. Thank you to everyone that has followed us this far. I can't wait to show you guys what the series looks like in the end. It's going to be amazing. The girls are awesome. Everything is going beautifully according to plan. I will talk to you guys soon. Thank you guys so much. Eyes in the sky, gazing far into the night. I raise my hand. To the fire, but it's no use Cause you can't stop it from shining through It's true, baby, let the light shine through If you believe it's true Baby, won't you let the light shine through For you